quote, something went horribly wrong here in Santa Fe on the set of Alec Baldwin's new Western film, Rust. The actor and producer fired the firearm that killed the director of photography, injured the director. The idea that a gun could have been fired and someone could have been killed in 2021 on the set of a movie was completely shocking. And ultimately, the big question is, who is to blame? There are so many questions that investigators are trying to answer. The who, what, why, and how. How on earth does this happen? In the aftermath of the shooting, the set was shut down, search warrants were issued, and the investigation began. It turns out there have been a number of different questions raised about what exactly caused the deadly shooting to occur. Tonight, authorities now confirming it was a live bullet that that gun had that was handed to Alec Baldwin. When we processed the scene and the evidence was collected and all the rounds were gone through, uh, we determined that there were other possible live rounds that were on set. Here's the reality. Guns have been used in Hollywood movies for decades and decades and decades. The live ammunition is never supposed to be on the set of a movie or television show. End of story. Obviously, we want to know how that live round got on the set, but what's more important is how that live round got into the gun. We identified two other people that handled and or inspected the loaded firearm prior to Baldwin firing the weapon. These two individuals are armorer Hannah Reed Gutierrez and assistant director David Halls. Marker. Dutch Merrick is a longtime Hollywood armorer and prop master, and though he didn't work on Rust, he told us his protocol for checking rounds. When we're dealing with dummy rounds, as they come out of the box, each one gets a rattle, and it's very easy to tell which is a dummy. If I picked up a dummy round and it didn't rattle, I would stop, and I would go, wait a second. I would isolate it from the rest of the dummy rounds. If there's any question, any anomaly, it's not going into the gun, it's not going onto the film set. According to a search warrant, Assistant Director Dave Halls told investigators that Gutierrez Reed opened up the firearm that would be used by Baldwin, but Halls said he could only remember seeing three rounds, and that he should have checked all the chambers of the gun but didn't, and he couldn't recall if Gutierrez Reed spun the drum. Halls also told investigators he didn't know that there were any live rounds in the gun. An attorney representing Dave Halls has said it was not his client's responsibility to confirm whether that gun was loaded. According to a search warrant, Gutierrez Reed told investigators that she loaded five dummy rounds into Baldwin's gun before lunch, and then a sixth after, when the gun was retrieved from a safe. She would have never in a million years thought a live round was gonna be on that set. Nobody did. Her attorney has said his client has no idea where the live rounds came from. There is a scrutiny on Hannah Gutierrez Reed's role. She was responsible for the arms and for whatever projectiles or bullets went into the weapon. Was this was second feature film where she was the head armor. She had previously worked on a Nicolas Cage movie. Hannah Gutierrez Reed's first job as armor was on a movie called The Old Way. She did a podcast interview in September where she said, Basically, it was she did not know she should accept it. I was really nervous about it at first, and I almost didn't take the job because I wasn't sure if I was ready, but doing it, like, it went really smoothly. She is a very safety-conscious individual. She's been trained extremely well by the best in the business. From the get-go, she seemed very competent with the handguns. She seemed very safe. I had no reason to doubt her. She showed me in the first couple days on set that she knew what she was doing. On that tragic day on the set of Rust, there are now live rounds, and one live round has somehow made it into this gun. And now the third question here, when this turns deadly, is why did the gun go off? I'm handed a gun, and someone declares, I said, this is a cold gun. Dave Halls? Oh, the, 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 the first AD. There are conflicting statements in reference to who handed the gun to Mr. Baldwin. But at this point in the investigation, I think it's clear to the investigator, and that was uh, Mr. Halls in the statements from Mr. Halls that he did, did not recall handling, handing the weapon or he did not hand the weapon to Mr. Baldwin. Independent witnesses state that he, that he did. 
So there's a discrepancy there. Dave Hall's lawyer will not confirm that he handed Alec Baldwin the gun. It wasn't in the script for the trigger to be pulled. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. So now, you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. I, I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. never. That was the training that I had. You don't point a gun at me and, and pull the trigger. Dave was there when the gun discharged. Dave has told me since day one it was an accident. He's told me that Mr. Baldwin never pulled the trigger. This is a replica model. It's virtually identical, but it's a non-firing replica of the gun that they used on that set. If you don't pull the trigger, the design of this gun will not let the hammer go forward. It's designed to stop at the halfway point. If I pull the hammer back most of the way and let go, as Alec Baldwin said, it's designed to not drop on a round. If this gun had been in service for many, many, many years and had worn parts, maybe that's a factor. A worn out gun or a broken gun may be a factor in this. The FBI is currently examining that gun. There will be tests and analysis done on the firearm for its functionality. There were several things that went wrong. Two people accidentally shot. We need help immediately. It wasn't just one accident. It was a series of perhaps just accidents all put together caused this really catastrophic breakdown on the set of Rust. It was kind of a, a perfect storm. Are you prepared to press criminal charges once this investigation is in your hands? Of course, if the investigation shows that criminal acts occurred. For many in the film community, the Rust incident brought back memories of another tragedy that ended in a fatality and also raised concerns about safety on sets. The first thing I thought when I heard about the tragedy on the set of Rust was the terrible tragedy on the set of Midnight Rider. I looking at an ambulance. Someone got hit by a train. Sarah Jones was killed by a train while shooting the film Midnight Rider in Georgia. After the shock and anger, I couldn't stop crying. When Sarah died, we'd hoped her death might save someone's life. It would have prevented Helena's death, but it didn't. No one should die making a movie. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.